The Gonzaga Bulldogs, they're 17 and 0. Still number one after a 97-75 win over Pepperdine on Saturday behind 19 points from Drew Timmy, 17 points from Andrew Nemhart and 8 assists. Aaron Cook, also another backup guard with 15 points. Jalen Suggs, just 4 points in 17 minutes, so Mark Few barely even using him. And, I mean, whether you like this or dislike this tactic, I mean, he's saving his thoroughbred. He's saving his star player. He's doing what, you know, Greg Popovich has done for years. And, you know, I watched it here with the Toronto Raptors two years ago with Kawhi Leonard getting his uh, rest days and stuff. And so he's doing it. And all of this is doing is setting Gonzaga up for more success come March when you're going to have a knock on wood, healthy and really fresh Jalen Suggs. And then, you know, there you go. You got when when Mark Few hands, you know, the keys to the car over to Andrew Nemhart. No, nothing changes. Everything works just fine. 17 points, 8 assists, and also Aaron Cook with 15 as well. So both of those guys more than capable. I've said it a dozen times. Andrew Nemhart, I think, is an NBA player. And Aaron Cook, I mean, a damn good, you know, backup guard. It's a guy that was, you know, put up big numbers for Southern Illinois over the, pers over the first four years of his career because he got a medical red shirt. So fifth-year guy, great player, great little player, great experience. But the Zags... Just so deep, so unbelievable. Also, Corey Kispert with 16 as well. So now this is a stat that I saw over the weekend that really kind of mind-blowing because I recognized really early with this Gonzaga team that something special was going on. You know, I've talked about this. I'm not a young guy. You know, I'm in my 40s. You know, I've seen the UNLVs of the late 80s, early 90s. I've seen the Dukes of the 90s, the Kentucky Untouchables of 96. You know, then the great Duke teams of the early 2000s and the Carolina teams and the Fab Five. I've seen them all. And Gonzaga is just as good as, as any of them. There's something really special going on with this team. And that's why I decided to focus on it pretty intensely from the start of the season. I mean, obviously, this is a mid-major podcast. But when you have the number one team in the country that is an all-timer team, kind of makes content for my podcast a little easier and a little bit more interesting. But so the Zags now have won 14 consecutive games by double digits. And that's the longest streak within a season by a number one team since the 1990-91 UNLV run in Rebels. So, I mean, these guys right here, I mean, could be, you could make an argument it's the greatest college basketball team ever, certainly in the top five teams. That's not even an argument ever. No Gonzaga in this type of territory. So, I mean, the run in Rebels, they had 19 games in a row, winning by 10 or more. Gonzaga at 14 right now, and... I mean, that streak by UNLV is, is going to be in danger the way the Zags are playing right now. So I, I was thinking about this over the weekend as well. <clears throat> and Gonzaga now has Alabama football problems, if you can believe that. So one of my favorite podcasts I listen to, you say, hey, you guys listen to my podcast. What do I listen to? One of my favorite ones is on the Locked On Network. It's called Locked On Bama. So all things Alabama, mostly football, a little bit of basketball. And I'm not per se an Alabama football fan. What I am a fan is of greatness. And so, I mean, what Nick Saban is doing in Alabama is mind-blowing. You know, I've watched college sports my whole life and something really special. Speaking of special, there's something really special going on. And so I want to pay close attention to it. I want to know the recruiting. I want to know everything there is to know about Alabama. And Locked On Bama, great guys are hilarious. Uh, two really funny guys who host it. And so one of the things they talked about this year, and it holds very true to Gonzaga basketball as well, is how you know Alabama football players almost kind of cannibalize each other when it comes to player of the year votes. You look at you know Mac Jones, the quarterback this year, Najee Harris, the running back, and of course the eventual Heisman winner, Devonta Smith. But you could have flipped a coin. Any of those three could have, should have won the Heisman. And so they were wondering, you know, on Locked On, Locked on Bama all year, hey, you know, are those votes going to cannibalize itself when it comes to Heisman voting and all these player of the year voting? And uh, I think, you know, Alabama, Alabama kind of made a late PR push to go, look, if you're going to vote for anyone, vote for Devonta. He's going to get the Heisman. So they did that. And you see that this year with Gonzaga. You know, is Jalen Suggs the player of the year? Is it Corey Kisper? Well, now I can make an argument that Drew Timmy is the college basketball player of the year. You know, we've been hearing about Luca Gar Garza on Iowa. We just lost two games this week. Okay, the Zags still haven't lost. When they played Iowa head-to-head, -head, Gonzaga destroyed them. And so I think 
Garza is dropping in the player of the year race, and it's clearly one of the Gonzaga guys, but which one is it? You know, it's it's a lot like Alabama football over the past couple of years. They kind of cannibalize, cannibalize each other, but hey, you ask any Bama fan, they'll be happy to have that problem, and you ask any fan of Gonzaga, they'll be happy to have the exact same problem. So, first world problems, man. Bama football, Gonzaga basketball. Um, but either way, it really is something special and, and, and great to see what's happening. It's, I mean, if you haven't watched enough Gonzaga this year, do it. You know, before we get to March Madness, it really is a thing of beauty.